Hello and welcome to this introduction to the SketchUp extension Flowify. Flowify is an extension inspired by Rhino's command flow along surface and if you're familiar with Chris Fulmer's shape bender you can view this extension as a 3D version of the same basic idea so whereas shape bender relates the source geometry to an edge and then bends it along a curve Flowify relates the source geometry to a plane and then bends it along a surface and the way it works is that we have some pieces of source geometry and this geometry is projected onto this flat quad grid and the geometry is then mapped over to this target surface and we build up the geometry along this target surface taking account of the underlying shape of the surface and the result in this case is this curved cityscape And here's a view from underneath, and input to the extension is, apart from a piece of source geometry, this big group, which we will call the support group. And it consists of uh, three further groups. So we have our projection grid, which is a flat quad grid, flat rectangular quad grid. And we have a target surface, which is also a rectangular quad grid, and rectangular in the sense that we have four distinct corners. And then we have this group, which consists of two edges. And these edges connect two adjacent corners on the projection grid with two adjacent corners on the target surface. And this is for orientation. It just tells the extension that this border on the projection side is this border on the target side. The uh, cell topology or the quad topology between the projection grid and the target surface have to match. So if we have 23 cells between the edges on the projection grid, we also need 23 cells between the edges on the target surface. However, the extension also accepts an input like this. So the extension will automatically impose a grid if the, the projection grid is empty. Or we could just select this support group and then select impose grid. And then we get a, a projection grid with uh, matching topology. So we, we map the uh, faces, uh, faces only. So stray edges with no faces attached will be, will be ignored. And the face is by definition flat, and if the face do does not remain flat after we've mapped it, we need to triangulate it. And if we turn on the hidden geometry, we can see that there's quite a lot of triangulation going on here. And in this example, we have the same target surface and the, the same source geometry, but a slightly different orientation. And the source geometry protrudes the uh, projection grid. And that is also true here on the target side. And this uh, side view clearly shows the spherical nature of the mapping. And so far we've used uh, target surfaces with flat quads, but that is not necessary. This surface is an output from the extension Bezier surface by Tom Tom. And if we turn on the hidden geometry, we can see that each quad consists of two triangles. And here's a view without the, the target surface. And if we move over to the uh, projection side, we can see that we have a flat 8x8 eight eight, uh, quad grid. And it's, it is also regular, and it is regular in the sense that all the cells have the same size and shape. But that is not necessary either. And in this example, we still have a flat 8x8 eight eight quad grid, but it is highly di distorted. And due to the irregular nature of the projection grid, the target geometry also becomes very distorted, and the house assumes uh, this this uh, somewhat haunted appearance. And we can compare it to our uh, last example where we used the same uh, target surface but a regular projection grid. 
and this house is cl clearly more distorted. So that concludes our introductory examples and we're going to follow up with uh, with a tutorial solving uh, solving a real world modeling problem. So thanks for watching.